He stole, he complained to the calamity, but no one helped him with his troubles. He tried to enjoy himself as he said, I've arrived, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. But he couldn't do without a woman. He devoted his house to find one. As it turned out, his house was legendary. He sent news to the country. Whoever kills the giant and brings my woman here, I will give him my beloved house, which I cherish more than my life. Then he explained the location of the giant and furnished his house. The house was not a house at all, but a mansion. It was adorned with flowers all around. The air was very clean and the water was refreshing. Like a throne whose roads were made of jewels and whose doors were made of emeralds, it was too beautiful to be described with tongue or written with pen. Everyone was amazed and drooled. They worked hard to reach the fairy tale land of their dreams and rejoiced that they had reached home. As the old saying goes, hand is better than hand. Don't know a dream before you see it. He who knows his job is wielding a sword. The three brothers knew what they had to do, mounted their horses, swords in hand, machetes at the waist, and ran to the place where they had learned about the giant. It was not easy for them to arrive. Sometimes they were the wind and jumped from mountain to mountain. Sometimes they were the storm and crossed oceans. Sometimes they were the flood and flowed over the plains. One day they were defeated by a dwarf 50 centimeters tall. Another time they defeated a giant army with a clatter of swords. But at last, they came to the cave where the giant was. They clattered their swords, clicked their heels, and gave a salute to the giant. The giant was surprised. He looked through the keyhole to see who was coming. The swords descended, the giant bent his neck, his eyes, and the giant died on the spot. They opened the door, hugged their mother's neck, and wept. Joy was in waves. Tears flowed like water. They got on their horses and rode to their father's side, saying, There, there, ride on. At first, the father was surprised, saying, My sons, and rejoiced. While he rejoiced, the children cried. The one who fell into the water took the saz in his hand, struck the string with his plectrum, and poured out his inner pain. Then he called out to his father, O oh, father, my blood, if you were a father, you wouldn't have dropped me in the water, you wouldn't have gone away. The one who was caught by the beast also poured out his heart, and like his brother, he called out to his father. O oh, my father, if you were a father, you wouldn't have left your son alone, you wouldn't have enjoyed the pleasures of the world. The son snatched by the bear couldn't stand it either, and called out, Oh my father, would a bear take care of a son who is a father? The wife also cried out, A giant snatches a woman, but the bey enjoys himself in the Mukhtar's office. Bey said, You are right. He bent his neck, he hugged his children, and took his wife, and they came to their beautiful house which was too legendary to be told. Three apples fell from the sky, and out of them came three beautiful girls. One of them was a pomegranate or a grain of light. The other one was moon-faced with a sweet smile, and her life was like a candy with a bow eyebrow and a sweet smile. All three were taken by three brothers. They have fulfilled their destiny and good luck to you.